Hello. Today we are going to talk about the basics of dilution. Uh, dilution is a concept that if you are an entrepreneur who is starting a company that you definitely need to understand. Uh, the concept of dilution usually surrounds a funding event. Uh, and in this case the funding event would be a sale of stock or equity. And I'm going to walk through on the whiteboard uh, some of the basics around dilution. Uh, and go quickly through what would happen in a typical funding event. Um, let's start with um, a pre-money and post-money valuation. These are two important concepts uh, as an entrepreneur that you should understand. Pre-money valuation is the value of your company before you raise funding, pre-money. Post-money valuation will be the resulting value of your company after you raise money, post-money. A simple way to think about that is if your company is worth a million dollars before you raise funding and you raise a million dollars, now you have the exact same company with a million dollars in the bank. So now it's worth two million dollars. And you get that number by adding your pre-money valuation with the amount of money that your company raises. So in this example, we're going to talk about your co incorporated, your company if you're a founder. Uh, this, these are the ownership percentages inside of your co the day before they raise funding. Founder number one owns 40%, founder number two owns 30%, founder number three owns 30%. You'll notice that these numbers add up to 100% of the company because they haven't taken on investment yet. Remember, that's before funding. Now let's talk about the funding event. The pre-money valuation of the funding event is $1 million. Uh, you and the investor come to the agreement that your company is worth $1 million before you put money in. The post-money valuation depends on how much money the investor invests in the, in the company. In this case, the investor is investing $1 million. The investor wants to invest $1 million. So like I explained before, the post-money valuation would be $1 million plus your investment which would equal, in this case, $2 million. So $2 million becomes an important number because that's how much your company is worth post-funding event. Again, post-money valuation. So let's look at how these ownership percentages would shake out after the funding event happened. So your investor happily puts in a $1 million. Uh, your company is now worth $2 million. Well, founder number one used to own 40% of the company. Uh, but now the investor comes in with a million dollars. So the investor's share of this company would be 50%. And I'm getting that by dividing the post money valuation divided by the amount of money that the investor put in. Uh, so the investor, having put in a million dollars, owns half of this new entity that's worth $2 million. So let's look at what happens to the other founders. Uh, founder number one owns 40% of the company, uh, founder number two owns 30 and founder number three owns 30. Remember that this 100% of the company that they, the founders own now is going to be worth in total 50% because the investor now owns 50% of the new company. Therefore, founder number one who used to own 40% now owns 20%. Founder number two that used to own 30% now owns 15%. Same for founder number three. And again, if you add all these up, <laughs> I have to make sure, if you add all these up, they will add up to 100%. So what happened here is the concept of dilution. Founder number one before the funding event had a 40% equity stake in the company, ownership percentage, that decreased to 20% because they took on funding. Uh, and you'll notice what happened to founder number two and number three, mathematically, they were diluted the same amount. Uh, so sometimes inexperienced founders look at this mathematical equation and they get you know, either depressed or discouraged that this is a bad thing for your company. Uh, that isn't necessarily the case. Um, the bet that you're making during an equity financing is that by raising money, your company will be able to grow into something more valuable than it was before. The idea being that owning a large percentage of something worth not that much 
uh, won't be as good as owning a smaller percentage of a company that grows up to be worth a lot. Let's say that ultimately you sell this company for $20 million. Okay? Um, that would be a very good outcome in this case, a $20 million sale. In that case, if you own 20% of the company, founder number one would make $4 million. Uh, I think any of us would be happy with that. Uh, however, if you did not raise funding, let's say, and your company struggles to grow because you didn't have enough capital, uh, and you sell the company in a bad outcome for a million dollars, the same as it was valued when you thought about raising funding, and you own 40%, you, your ownership percentage would be 400 grand. Um, so even though founder number one owned a lot less in this company, with a good outcome, uh, that could be attributed to raising money, um, there would be a much better payoff for the founder. In this case, not so good of an outcome. Uh, the founder doesn't make out as well, even though they own a larger percentage. Uh, of course, in a perfect world, nobody wants to sell equity in their company. So if you can grow your company without selling any, any stock or raising any money, then you would maintain the highest ownership percentage possible. Uh, and if you still sell your company for a great value, um, then that's the best case scenario. Obviously, nobody wants to give away percentages of equity. However, uh, the bet that you're making with investment is that if you do give away a percentage of the company, you're betting that the company will grow up to be worth more in the long run. Therefore, your smaller percentage of ownership is more valuable in the long term.